Welcome to this Edge Church podcast. We are a people whose mission is to know Christ, be the church, and serve our community. We pray you are blessed and equipped by this message. Well, my name's Andrew. It's a privilege to be here. Having been in the house preaching, I think, since last November, been praying for you constantly. Uh, to our Bristol family, Happy New Year. Haven't seen you since last year, so Happy New Year. Praying for an incredible 2024. Happy New Year to our Renella family. Hope you had a great time with family over Christmas and you had a great start to 2024. We finished our year, Pastor Karen and myself. It was their 60th birthday last year. And I, I say year because it started from January the 1st, 2023. And she sucked it dry all the way till the 31st of December. As she deserves. Yes, I get it. I know you're on her side, so it's all good. One of her last requests of many in the 60th year was a Christmas cruise. I'd like to go on a Christmas cruise. Well, okay, so I found a Christmas cruise and middle of December, we flew to Melbourne, got on a p cruise ship and cruised all the way back to Kangaroo Island, <laughs> which uh, for our Bristol family is off the coast of Adelaide. Never been there, had a day driving around it. It is, man, beautiful. Back on the high seas for a couple of days with a bit of rocky seas, which was okay. Got to the coast uh, of Tasmania and Hobart. Man, that's spectacular. Tasmania, beautiful. Cruised around there for a couple of days. Had a couple of days on the high seas coming back to Melbourne with beautiful, calm Bass Strait. Thank you, Jesus. And we had Christmas on the water. It was significant in so many ways. My mum had suddenly passed a couple of weeks before that. We'd already planned this time. And so it was a time of healing and, and grieving and started to realise that this is a new day for myself and my wife because that was the last of our parents to, to go. And so we step in, we're next in line. It's a new day for us. So God's been challenging me, what am I gonna do with my time? How am I gonna use my time? Do I see this as a new day opportunity? I was preparing for this message was reminded of something that Pastor Jeff Woodward spoke over this house back in 2022. He was preaching a message, then went sideways and I believe started to speak prophetically, started to speak about our preferred future. And he said these words, God's not bringing back a slightly improved version of yesterday. Edge Church is not meant to be a slightly improved version of its history. God is wanting to bring this church into something that is new, new, not new old. What a future and a destiny lies before edge. I say, Amen. I say, Amen. In Bristol, Amen. So I couldn't get this idea of new, new out of my head. The message title is, new, new. I wanna look at three areas of our new, new this morning. And I've been praying and fasting this week for a real move of God amongst us and a generous outpouring of the new wine of His Spirit. We're gonna create space. At the end of this message, we're gonna open up the altar and I am convinced that God is gonna do something beautiful amongst us. First point, it's a new, new day. Say new, new day. Song of Songs. Don't you love it where you have these favourite verses that keep coming back to you in your life and keep speaking in different ways? This is why it says the Bible is alive and active. It's like no other book. They've tried for decades to destroy it. You can't. It's living. It's active. It's powerful. Amen, Bristol. <laughs> Song of Songs. 
the one I love calls to me. The bridegroom king, I'm telling you, the one we love is calling to us afresh. He's calling to this mother house and he's calling to Bristol in a new way. And he's saying, arise, my dearest. Hurry, my darling, come away with me. I've come as you've asked to draw you to my heart and to lead you out. Now is the time. My beautiful one. You know, He sees you as beautiful. You may not think you are. He does. You're made in His image. (laughs) The season has changed. I'm here to declare to you that the season has changed changed. (laughs) The bondage of your barren winter has ended. The season of hiding is over and gone. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth. Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you. The early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers, there's change in the air. Arise my love, my beautiful companion, run with me to the higher place. For now is the time to arise and come away with me. For you are my dove, hidden in the split open rock. It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship, how lovely your voice in prayer. Wow, what a scripture. I'm here to declare to you in Bristol and Ranella that there is a new, new day of destiny breaking forth around us. I'm praying that despite how things may look or feel or seem, that you will discern spiritually that there is a new, new day of destiny. After 15 years as a part of this house, a part of this church, having lived in each of our campus cities, I am declaring to you that this is a day like we've not seen before. It's a new, new day. I refuse to listen to or be led by the lies of an enemy telling me nothing will change and nothing is different. I will be led by the truth of God's Word. (laughs) It's a new day for the mother house. Yes, it is. You may have heard it before. You may be sceptical, but I'm declaring to you that it's not just a new day. It's a new, new day. I'm declaring to our Bristol family that despite how it feels and looks and seems, that God is breaking out amongst us and it's a new, new day. (laughs) So how do we embrace this new day? How do I stay calm and godly in the transition into the fullness of that day? Four keys from the Song of Songs Scripture. Number one, arise and come away with Him. God has been calling me to greater intimacy. I believe He's always calling His church to greater intimacy. The purpose of the Gospel was always greater intimacy, friendship, deep friendship. Now is the time to run to the higher place with Jesus. I ask God to forgive me. At the start of this year, 
for my own prayer life and lack of depth and hunger and passion. Ask for forgiveness and committed to a new season of digging a new well in prayer and fasting and hungering and seeking Him. What Jesus desires more than anything from you in 2024 is more time with Him. Jesus is asking you to come away with Him. I've been really affected by a book I've been reading, just finished it at the start of this year, a book on prayer called Prayer Power. In the book, it talks about a 1983 evangelism conference in Amsterdam where Billy Graham shared three basic keys to success in God's eyes. Would you like to hear them? Number one, prayer. Number two, prayer. Number three, a great old saint of prayer, Samuel Chadwick said that Satan laughs at our toil He mocks our wisdom, but trembles when we pray. How much do we make him tremble? I want to make him tremble a lot this year. (laughs) If we kneel in prayer in 24, we will stand tall in God no matter what's happening around us. I love what great man of God, Tory said, we live in a day characterised by the multiplication of man's machinery. The great cry of our day is work, work, work. New methods, new organisations, new machinery. But the great need of our day is prayer. He wrote that a hundred years ago. (laughs) How much more relevant is it today? Come to a higher place You were made for Him and without Him. He talks in this book about a meeting in the 1870s where D.L. Moody, the great evangelist from America, visited the UK to preach in a church and he had two meetings and the first meeting was so unresponsive. It was dead. He felt like not coming back for the second message That day, an elder saint, after the first meeting, went home to her bedridden elder sister and shared the challenge of the meeting. The older sister said, that's okay. We're gonna fast and we're gonna pray all night and all morning before the next meeting. So this incapacitated older saint got to work. The next meeting, Revival broke out, 500 people gave their heart to Jesus. What was the difference? One person praying and fasting. Wonder how many of us prayed and fasted about the meeting today. I wonder what would have happened if we all did. I'm not speaking at you because I'm doing it myself. We are all called to be people of prayer. In this book, the the author Stuart Robinson, an incredible man of God in his 80s, still traveling around the world, discipling. In 2001, he was diagnosed with a spontaneous dissection of the carotid artery deep in his brain, given three hours to live. The Lord woke him up. Suddenly, he went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror and felt God say to him that today he was gonna walk out of the hospital because God had more for him. He was immediately healed. Doctors said it's a miracle and he's still serving God and writing the book that I'm reading that affected my life in 2024. He later found out that at the moment of his healing, some people in the church had been burdened for his health and gathered and prayed at the exact moment he's healed. What a coincidence. 
What would happen if this house broke out in prayer? What would happen if we broke out in prayer and fasting? Fasting is simply eating less and praying more. Number one, are you all with me? (laughs) Arise and come away. Number two, allow Him to prune us. John 15, I am the true grapevine. My Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit and He prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they produce more. He is our loving gardener. He wants to shape your life into something extraordinary. Here's what a person of faith does, which doesn't make sense to the world, is that they can be people that are being painfully pruned and sing. Bristol, the pruning of God, the painful, but beautiful pruning of God that mature saints sing through. (laughs) You're all looking at me like I'm crazy. It's what the Word says. It's true because I've done it. (laughs) We don't live the way the world does. It's an upside down world. Thank God for that because this world is crazy. I can sing while I'm being pruned because I'm not focusing on the pain, I'm focusing on the pruner. And I'm seeing through the pain to the beautiful fruit that God's bringing out of my life. He is always making something beautiful and surprising. He's pruning me for purpose, for fruitfulness and for an eternal future with Him. When we first moved to Adelaide years ago, we moved to Onkaprinka Hills, which is down the road for those in Bristol, about 20 minutes down the road, south of Adelaide. And we bought this house. God miraculously provided this house. One of the biggest challenges of the house was it had 40 rose bushes. I'm not a gardener. I'm a better gardener though than my wife, who if, if you give her a flower, it's gonna be dead within days. Although she's been quite good with succulents recently. That's the secret, isn't it? Probably because they don't need any care, but anyway. (laughs) So I thought, let's just cut them back. The worst thing is they die and we start a new garden. So I just savaged them. Literally, there was just sticks left. Within months, roses everywhere. We moved to Melbourne, to Forest Hill. This time there was only one rose, thank the Lord. It was the saddest rose bush in history. I I literally started to tear up looking at it. It was so sad. So I did the same thing. I hacked away at it. I didn't check YouTube, didn't research, didn't ask a gardener, I just hacked away. Guess what? Didn't die, no, blossomed. Flowers everywhere. This is God's plan for our life. There's a blossoming and a blooming coming for those that allow God to prune them and sing at the same time. Third, awaken afresh to His leading. Bristol, we can have an incredible confidence as we walk into 2024, despite the fact that the world is full of fear and uncertainty, and anxiety because as a Christian, our posture is faith and trust in a God who has gone before us. (laughs) He has always led us as a house. He's always led us. He's never let us down. He speaks to our future and from our future. Let us be awakened afresh to the leading of God in our lives. We will not be led by our emotions or by other people, but led by the Word and the Spirit. May we be people who have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to the church. 
and walk in obedience to his ways. Psalm 32, I'll instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I'll counsel you with my eye upon you. Anyone had their mum say, I've got my eye on you? It's like a threat, right? But it's out of love because they're watching to protect you. I'm here to say to you this morning, God has His eye upon you. Not only that, but you are the apple of that eye. You are. You don't look like you believe that this morning. You are the apple of His eye. He has His eye upon you. He never takes His eye off you. <laughs> oh, thank God for being a Christian. I don't know how people survive in this world without the hope and the strength and the love that's found in Christ. Number four, always positioned in worship and prayer. So what is God's will for me in 2024? Well, 1 Thessalonians is pretty clear. Rejoice always, delight in your faith, be unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation, no matter what the circumstance, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you. I'm telling you, if we live like that, the rest of the will of God just beautifully unfolds before us. Joy, prayer, thankfulness, a life of worship, unstoppable. The enemy cannot do anything with a Christian that lives that way. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter what's thrown at the Christian that lives that way. They just continue to worship, praise, thank God. There's a story of a medical missionary serving in an African hospital and every two weeks he had to ride his bike to a nearby city to collect supplies that required him to camp overnight in the jungle. One visit to the city, he treated a local man wounded in a fight. Weeks later, that same man approached him and told him how he and his friends had followed him into the jungle to rob and kill him. They waited till he was asleep, but noticed him surrounded by 26 armed guards. So they fled in fear. <laughs> Later, when the missionary shared this story in an event in the USA, a man jumped to his feet and asked when exactly this happened. The man shared that at the same time exactly he was playing golf in the USA. He felt led to pray and was compelled to get his church to join in prayer. He asked the men who prayed with him that morning to stand in the meeting. How many people do you think stood up? 26. Does that sound a bit freaky to you? Does that sound a bit supernatural to you? We don't even touch the realm that we're called to because we're not willing to pay the price in prayer. What miracles are about to break out in this house in this new day? Can you not discern this new day of destiny? I declare over Bristol and over this house that there is change in the air. I declare that there is a budding of new life. I declare that there is blooming and blossoming happening around us. I declare there's a sweet fragrance being released, that there is fruitfulness coming, there is joy coming, there is freedom coming, there are prodigals returning, and most importantly of all, they're souls. Not one or two, <laughs> not three or four. Souls, souls, more souls. I pray for a spirit of prayer and intercession to hit our Bristol campus and our Ranella campus in a way that changes us and changes everything. So it's a new, new day. And secondly, it's a new, new way. Isaiah 43. 
I'm the Lord who opened a way through the waters, a dry path through the sea. I called forth a mighty army of Egypt and all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waters, they drowned. Their life snuffed out like a smouldering candlewick. God has done miracles in this house over the last almost 30 years. He's not done yet. Our best days are before us. Verse 18, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. I've already begun, do you not see it? I'll make a pathway through the wilderness, rivers in the dry wasteland, the wild animals in the field will thank me, the jackals and the owls too, for giving them water in the desert. I'll make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. This is a refreshing coming and has already come to many of us. A new, new way requires us to look forward to the year with faith, hope and love. We understand that God is at work in our lives and that He will make a way. We're thankful for the past, but we forget the past and launch into a new day of destiny. Bristol, it may feel like they're still the old ways. Renella, it may feel and look the same, but I'm declaring that God is making a new, new way. I've been uh, praying and had a couple of songs just over and over again. One of them I'm gonna sing at, at the back end of this, but the other one was this song about, and it says, you will make all things new and I will follow you forward. God is moving us forward. We're not going back, it says. We're moving ahead. Amen. There are things that we need to let go of from last year in order to be surrendered and open for the new, new that He wants to put in our hands. Rivers of life. We're a people that see through the seen into the unseen realm. 2 Corinthians, filled with good courage and confident hope, knowing that while we're at the body, we're absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Well, so be of good courage and confident hope and prefer rather to be absent from the Lord and to be at home with the Lord. There's far more here, Bristol, there's far more here than meets the eye. (laughs) There's a war raging over our house and over our future and over the generations. Here's a new, new way. As you know, my mum passed suddenly about a month ago I was due to fly out on a Friday to preach in our Melbourne campus. End of last year, Friday morning, early flight, I got a phone call from my sister Thursday night saying that suddenly mum's been in hospital, they've checked her out and unbeknownst to us, she was riddled with cancer, become septic through all her organs and the doctors had told her she's got hours to live. My sister was telling me this, I said, put mum on the phone, I said my goodbyes to her and said, hang on mum, I'm, I'm gonna be there tomorrow morning. Got to the airport, went to the lounge. They said, didn't you get the email? I go, no, they said, it's been cancelled. We're gonna fly you via Brisbane to get in Melbourne nine o'clock tonight. I said, no, you're not, because my mum's dying. They couldn't do anything. So I went to another airline, to a service desk with three people, with no one lining up, told them my... Mum was dying, can you do anything for me? And they told me to go and find a flight on the internet. So I rang up my wife, who'd literally just dropped me off at the airport, said, pack a suitcase, come back, we're hitting the road. So we drive for nine hours, praying the whole way. Jesus, keep her, (laughs) I just want to say goodbye physically to her. She hung on for the next four days. Why do I share that? Because... I keep having to ask God to forgive me for not trusting Him enough. 
Because I'm at the airport thinking, what are you doing, God? You can organise a flight now. But it's all no, no, no. Why? Well, because He wanted my wife to be there. (laughs) Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways and He will make your paths straight. Isn't that our journey as a church? Right now, what are we doing? Trusting in the Lord with all of our heart. We're not leaning on our understanding of what's happening or where we're going. We're acknowledging Him in all of our ways and know He will make our paths straight. Do you agree with that in Bristol? If so, say Amen in Bristol and in this room. Amen. Amen. There's a new, new way for you. Yeah. This year, clarity comes for many people. A new, new way. But it is going to be birthed on your knees. Charles Spurgeon, Prince of Preachers, says this, the Lord will make a way for you where no foot has gone before. That which like a sea threatens to drown you will be a highway for your escape. It's a new, new day. It's a new, new way. And there is new, new wine. <laughs> Luke 5, John Disciples Fast and prayed regularly. So did the disciples of the Pharisees. Where are your disciples? Why are they always eating and drinking? Jesus responded to wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom. Of course not, but someday the groom will be taken, then they will fast. Just want to highlight that. It doesn't say then they may fast or then they fast when they feel like it. Just, just, just throwing that out. Then Jesus gave them this illustration. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment will be ruined and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment. No one puts new wine into old wineskins for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. There's new, new wine available for those that surrender (laughs) afresh to His ways and allow Him to do something new in and through them. I'm declaring over this house that there is an, un, the word that I felt God give me in prayer was an unleashing. There was gonna become an unleashing. New wine, a new anointing for Bristol, new wine poured out without measure. I don't want to be an inflexible, rigid wineskin that's incapable of holding the new wine that God wants to pour into my life this year. I want to be a man of God that's vulnerable, supple, open, flexible, surrendered to God like I never have been before. So overwhelmed by Jesus that nothing in this challenging transition journey overwhelms me. Jesus is the source of our new, new day, our new, new way and new, new wine. He's building His church. You see, new wine, worship team can come up. New wine is produced by the crushing of a grape. (laughs) You know, there's a high price paid for us to access this new wine this morning. It was by the crushing of our Jesus. In Isaiah 53, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush Him and cause Him grief. Yet when His life is made an offering for sin, He will have many descendants. Yes, this room is full of them. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in His hands. Before Jesus goes to the cross, He gathers with His disciples in the Last Supper and takes the wine and says, mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. His life gets crushed to produce new wine and life for us. 
we celebrate communion, declaring that one day with Jesus Himself, we drink of the new wine of a life of eternity and glory and immortality. But He gloriously gives us a taste of this wine today. Worship team can come. (laughs) God, take the ordinary water of my life and like you did at that wedding, miraculously transform it into wine. Our latter days will be greater than our former days. Haggai 2.9, this temple is gonna end up far better than it started out, a glorious beginning, but an even more glorious finish. A place in which I'll hand out wholeness and holiness. God, help me to be fruitful. How many are honour you by living a life of prayerfulness and holiness that makes many disciples? Our latter days, Renella and Bristol are gonna be greater than our former days. Ephesians 5, don't get drunk with wine for that is wickedness but be filled with the Spirit. (laughs) The believer doesn't need wine to experience joy. The Holy Spirit is the wine of heaven. In the book of Acts, when the Spirit came upon the new church, they were accused of being under the influence and being drunk. (laughs) They're just drunk, it says in Acts 2. And Peter steps forward, listen carefully. This is a man who's received some new wine and he becomes like a lion and he starts to roar like he's coming out of this house. Yes, the shyest and most unlikely of us I'm talking to as well. Not talking to the extrovert, although you'll have a new anointing of boldness. These people are not drunk. Nine o'clock's too early. Noah's predicted long ago by the prophet Joel in the last days. I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I'll pour out my Spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Why did they think they were drunk? They were acting under an influence. They were behaving abnormally. They were speaking and moving in a way that was different. May we be accused of being under the influence. People at work think that you're under the influence at school, in your neighbourhood, in your home, under the influence of the new wine of heaven, the Holy Spirit Himself. That brings boldness and joy and strength that causes us to live a life of celebration. I thank God for the pain of 2023 that purified me for His purposes in 2024. I thank God for the pain in 23 that caused me to hunger for more of His presence in 24. I thank God for all that the enemy meant for harm that God will turn around in 2024. I thank God for a new, new day. I thank God for a new, new way. I thank God for a new, new wine that's already being poured out in my life. And today I believe in our life, I want to declare over you a new, new day of freedom, of favour, of joy, of fruitfulness, of salvation, of homecoming, healing, adventure. I'm declaring this over you as well, Bristol. Of miracles, courage, anointing, generations, capacity, creativity, dreams, worship, praise, empowering, growth, health, humility, godly fear, and a ridiculous destiny.
2018, I was in a leadership gathering downstairs here in this room. They sang this song that we're about to sing called New Wine. As I was singing the words, I felt God speak to me and say, do you really mean that? Will you lay down everything as an offering? I said, yep. Then he said, including your grandchild? I said, yep. Literally two weeks later, I was asked to fly to Bristol to live when our granddaughter was about three or four. We'd been caring for her most of those first few years, my wife particularly, for a couple of days a week. I love being in Bristol. (laughs) But there was a lot of pain and growth and challenge and crushing. But boy, did God produce some great wine. (laughs) There's new wine for you, Bristol, today. Renella, there's new wine. Let me read you some of the lyrics of the song we're about to sing and then we're gonna invite you to respond. It says, in the crushing and in the pressing, you're making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you into your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel, make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I come here with nothing. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom and the Kingdom of God is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Here's what we're gonna do in Bristol and here in the room. In a moment, the team are gonna sing this song and as they do, I encourage you in a moment to stand with them As you're singing the song, if like me in 2018, that's moved from a song to a prayer, by the way, it's a pretty dangerous prayer if you mean it, but a glorious one. If you say, yes, I lay down my life afresh. Do whatever you wanna do. I want new wine, not just for me, but I want it to flow like a river out of me to all the brokenness and barrenness around my life. As it becomes a prayer, I invite you to the front. We're not gonna be praying for you because the Holy Spirit is gonna do it. Jesus is gonna pour out on you. So in Bristol, in a moment there locally, Clouder and the team are gonna sing that song and we're gonna invite you to respond. Leaders in the house, we're not asking you to pray for people, we're asking you to receive new wine. Jesus, for Bristol and for Ranella, for those online as well, Jesus, as we respond to Your Word, I know you're gonna do something beautiful in this place, something glorious, something new, new. I declare it over my life, over this Ranella family and over our Bristol family, over those even watching online that You will visit us in a new, new way. In Jesus' Name, I hand back to the Bristol team. Let's stand and worship. And when you feel that's your prayer, I invite you to the front and then I'll be praying for you all in a moment in Jesus' Name. Thanks for joining us today. Find more resources and discover what's next for you at edgechurch.com.